Hi, we're out on our range, and today will be part one in a multiple part series on accurate rifle shooting, and I mean specifically rifle shooting. But it comes with four caveats. One is, I have to explain the distinction I make between what I call range shooting and what I call real shooting. When I say real shooting, I mean citizen involved self defense shootings, law enforcement applications, military operations, hunting, whether you're talking about hunting squirrels, rabbits, deer, buffalo, whatever. Or perhaps you're just in the field and someone says, hey, Bob, can you hit that pop can? That and other things are what I call real shooting. And what I call range shooting is when you're on a KD range and you have the bench and you're sitting down and you have sandbags or some kind of vice. And you've got the nice spotting scope or maybe you roll out your range mat. Those kind of things have their application, but that's what I call range shooting. And today we're going to be talking specifically about what I call real shooting. Now, secondly, we've already done presentations on how to zero an ARA1 platform, how to zero an ARA2 platform, how to sight in your hunting rifle, and a few others. So there is going to be some redundant information today, but I'm going to try to keep that redundancy to a minimum. But before you feel the need to tell me about whatever it is you think I forgot to say, remember there's a lot of things we've already covered in previous presentations. Third, please remember that today is part one in a multiple part series. So before you feel the need to remind me about all the things you think I forgot to say, remember that today is part one. There are other things coming later. And four, remember that everything I'm going to say and do today is based on my education, my training, my experience. Different people have different experiences, so they employ different methods and they have different opinions. Everything I'm going to do today are my opinions, and nothing I say today should be inferred as any kind of tutorial. I am in no way trying to tell you what you should do, even if I say you should do this, or always remember to do that. It's just easier to get the point across if I word it that way. I am in no way trying to tell you what you should do. I'm only demonstrating what I do. So with that, let's get started, and we'll start with a demonstration. Now I'm going to demonstrate something which many of you already know, but for those who don't, bear with me while I make the point. I've got four targets set up and I'm going to shoot them from a distance of 30 yards with four different types of ammunition. The rifle I'm going to use is this Rossi Circuit Judge in caliber 45 Colt. Yes, this can accommodate 410 shot shells, but it is not a shotgun. It has a rifled barrel. This is a rifle. Let's see what kind of accuracy I can achieve with this.
Our four ammunitions were Remington Green and Yellow Box, Hornady Lever Revolution, Winchester Silver Tip, and Spear Gold Dot. So what do these targets show us? They may show us several things, but two that I want to point out right now. One, when you change ammunitions, you may significantly change your point of impact. Remember, I'm only shooting about 30 yards. That's a significant shift. Secondly, when you change ammunitions, certain types of ammo might shoot a whole lot more accurately than other types. Now, we don't want to get bogged down in the notion that this group is centered and this group is not. We want to look at the size of the group. This is a much better group than this one. And that could mean that this is poor quality ammunition, or it could mean that this particular rifle just does not like this particular ammunition. But let's put up one more target and shoot one more group. I switched rifles and now I have a group that's significantly better than my best group at the Rossi Circuit Judge. And yes, I measured this group is a little better than this one. The rifle I used to shoot this significantly better group is my Wasser 1063 loaded with tool ammo. And there's two points I want to make about that. One, the Rossi Circuit Judge that shot these groups has a highly visible fiber optic front sight. The Wasser has a black front sight post and I have difficulty finding it against the black target. That accounts for the slight deviation we do have here. Also, although I would consider tool ammo to be good ammo, it's hardly the precision ammo that Winchester Silvertip or Spear Gold Dot are. But we still see a significantly better group. And that brings me to, on my list of points for accurate rifle shooting, point one is, if you want to shoot a rifle accurately, you have to start with an accurate rifle. The Rossi Circuit Judge is the antithesis of that. I would not consider the Wasser 1063 really a precise target rifle, but it's definitely a significant step up. Now let's try another rifle that might be a step up from this. Now I have my PPS 43 CS, which may or may not be a step up from the Wasser, but bear with me for a minute. There's two things here. One, this is going to help me illustrate a point I'm trying to make. And two, please remember that today's presentation is designed specifically for an audience that has an attention span longer than eight seconds. Okay, I'm going to go back 30 yards and I'm going to shoot these two targets and let's see what kind of results I get.
In looking at our two targets, there's a couple of things you have to keep in mind. First, these are two different types of ammunition, neither of which was the ammo I used to zero this firearm. So the groups are off a little bit, and we need to concentrate on the size of the groups, not the location of them. Second, this is two impacts, and this impact really was just me. This is the group. So we see that one group is much better than the other. Why? Now, neither of these are what I would call stellar groups, but obviously one is a lot better than the other. Why is that? Actually, this target represents a couple of points that I want to make. Now, in both of these groups, the conditions didn't change. The weather hasn't changed. The targets are identical. I was shooting from the same distance for both of them. The conditions didn't change. Also, the firearm didn't change. I didn't switch firearms. And some people will say that the firearm changes because of barrel heating. Okay. This was not enough rounds to heat the barrel in any significant way. Also, remember, the better group was shot second. The group did not deteriorate because of barrel heating. So the rifle really didn't change at all. The shooter also didn't change. It was me for both groups. I didn't change in the span of that few minutes. The only factor that was different in these two groups was the ammunition. Now, both of these are 762 by 25, 85 grain full metal jacket round nose projectile. But the difference is that this one was shot with some Eastern Bloc military surplus ammunition. I don't know if you could hear it, but I could hear it, and even more so, I could feel it. Some of those rounds were significantly more or less powerful than some of the others. This is just low-quality ammunition. While our better group was shot with the commercially available Slam Below 762 by 25 And that brings me to one of the points that these targets illustrate. Now remember, point one on my list of points for accurate rifle shooting is, if you want to shoot a rifle accurately, you have to start with an accurate rifle. Point two has two parts. 2A. If you want to shoot a rifle accurately, you need good quality, accurate ammunition. And point 2B is that you need an ammunition that your rifle likes. Sometimes you can have good quality ammo and a good quality rifle, but the two don't really work well together. You need to have an ammunition that your rifle likes. These two targets also help me illustrate what I call the accuracy trapezoid. Now, let me take a few minutes to talk about that. Here we have a square and a trapezoid, and there's different types of trapezoids. A square is a four-sided figure which, to the best of my ability to draw, has all four sides of equal length, implying that all four sides are of equal importance. And I call this my pepperoni pizza square. To have a pepperoni pizza, you need crust, sauce, cheese, pepperoni. All of those are of equal importance. If you take away any one of them, you don't have a pepperoni pizza. If you take away the pepperoni, you have cheese pizza. You don't have a pepperoni pizza. All of these are of equal importance. If any one of them is lacking, then you either don't have a pepperoni pizza or you have a poor one. If you have good crust, good sauce, good cheese, but then only put three pieces of pepperoni on there, well, it's still a pepperoni pizza, just not a good one. Now with our trapezoid, in this case, it's a four-sided figure to which all four sides are of different lengths. And in the accuracy trapezoid, your four sides are your conditions, your rifle, your ammunition, and your shooter. But those are of different levels of importance. And in different situations, which one is of most importance can vary. Now, in discussing this, we have to remember that I'm talking about real shooting, not range shooting. Sometimes at the factory when they're doing ballistic testing, to give you the ballistic chart, you know a lot of times what they're shooting aren't really even firearms in the sense you may understand it. They're just test barrels. When I'm talking about real shooting, I mean in the field, when you're talking about sometimes you don't know the distance you're shooting, you just have to estimate it, and you're having to deal with adverse conditions. And the first one of those is the conditions under which you're shooting. Rainy, sunny, a really big one is wind. Again, having to estimate distance. All of these are part of the conditions that go into the situation and they can affect accuracy. Now the next side is your rifle. 
I'm not talking about just how true the barrel is. That's a big part of it, but it's not the only part. It's also the sights, the stock. Trigger pull is a big part of that. And it's your rifle as a whole. Now the ammunition, as we've seen, different types of ammunition can perform better than others. And finally, the shooter. All of these factors go into accurate rifle shooting, and they create the accuracy trapezoid. So with that in mind, let's take another look at those two targets I just shot. So understanding our accuracy trapezoid and looking at our two targets, what can we take from that? Well, the conditions, the firearm, and the shooter didn't change. The only thing that changed was the ammunition, and we got a much better result. Now, recently I've done some comparisons of different types of ammunition, and I was comparing the accuracy of those ammunitions, and a lot of people didn't understand what I was doing, and a lot of people took great umbrage to the fact that I wasn't using a vise and wasn't using a telescopic sight, and these kind of things. Okay. As I'm shooting two different types of ammunition, we have to account for variables. And remember, in this, the conditions didn't change in the few minutes that passed from shooting one group to the next. The firearm didn't change at all. I didn't change at all. The only thing that changed was the ammunition. So doing this under the conditions that I did it, can I stand here and say that this is absolutely one minute of angle ammunition, or it's absolutely two minute of angle ammunition? Of course not. But knowing that the only variable that changed between the two was the ammunition, I can absolutely conclude that at least in my firearm, this ammunition is a lot more accurate than this ammunition. Now, when you're shooting and trying to determine what ammunition is accurate for you, if you're the kind of person that shoots at a given distance and gets a group about this big, then it's going to be very difficult for you to determine what really is or isn't accurate ammunition in your firearm. And that's when it's going to be a great idea to go to the range and do some range shooting where you put that firearm in some kind of vice and take you out of the equation and get some kind of evaluation as to is your firearm and your ammunition and the combination of those two things accurate, which you can't evaluate when you're not capable of groups any better than that. But as far as shooting under real conditions, this can tell us a lot. Now, there were also people that took a lot of offense to me doing any kind of discussion about accuracy without having a telescopic scope on my rifle. Let me show you something. I just shot a five shot group on this target and I didn't make you sit through watching me shoot it. But this is me shooting prone supported from a distance of 100 yards with my Ruger M77, which is loaded with Remington green and yellow box, 338 Winchester Magnum, 225 grain pointed soft point. Let's take a close up look at the group. And here's our group. It's a little bit high, but that's okay because I zeroed the rifle at a distance longer than 100 yards. And remember, this is a half size silhouette. So this group covered by one hand, I'm gonna call that a mediocre group. Now I'll put up another target and shoot another group from 100 yards, but again, I won't make you sit through watching me shoot it. So here's our second group. Let's take a close-up look at this. And here's our group of five shots. Again, coverable by one hand. Not too bad. Our second group was shot with my Marlin Model 444S and caliber 444 Marlin, which is loaded with my hand loads. That's 444 Marlin loaded with 50 grains of 4198 powder behind a 240 grain XTP jacket at hollow point. That is not a recommendation. But now I'll put up another target and I'll shoot another group from 100 yards. And again, I won't make you sit through it. And now here's our group. And this is about a half inch smaller group than what I got with the 444. We also see that it's very far off of center. Well, evidently my sights have gotten knocked out of alignment since the last time I shot that rifle. And the rifle I used to shoot this group was my Marlin Model 30AS, it's a version of the 336 series, and it's loaded with Remington Green and Yellow Box 3030 150 grain round nose soft point. Now I'll put up another target, go back 100 yards and shoot another group. And here's our five shot group, and it's not too bad of a group. It is low, but there's a reason for that, and I'll explain in just a moment. 
Okay, a few things to explain. First, I had to take down the target that I shot with the Sentry Arms AK to make room for our fifth target. We were running out of room on the cardboard. Secondly, the reason this target is higher than the rest is because between the firing point and this target, there's a small terrain feature. I had to elevate it so the target wasn't obscured. Now, our fifth target, the firearm I used to shoot that was my Winchester Model 88, which has iron sights, and it's loaded with Remington Green and Yellow Box 308 Winchester 150 grain pointed soft point. We see that this target has a fairly good group, but it's low. There's a reason for that. We'll come back to it. Now, what can our five targets show us? Again, remember, I had to take down the target when I shot with the Sentry Arms AK. What we're really seeing here is that we have a variety of firearms with a variety of sighting systems. We have the Ruger M77 with a scope, the Marlin 444 Marlin with a scope, the Marlin 3030 with iron sights, the target I had to take down and I shot the Sentry AK that has iron sights and significantly different iron sights, and then the target I shot with the Winchester Model 88 which again has significantly different iron sights. And what we see is that all of our groups are mediocre to fairly good. In fact, the worst group is what I got with the Ruger M77. And one of the things that this string of targets illustrates is that having a scope on a rifle does not necessarily help me shoot any better. For some people, in some situations, a scope can be a big plus. For me, not so much. Now, a few minutes ago when we were talking about doing the ammunition comparisons, when I've compared different types of ammunition and done accuracy comparisons, there's been people who've contacted me telling me that those comparisons are completely superfluous because I didn't use a rifle with a telescopic scope. Okay, I have to go on this tangent. <laughs> I greatly appreciate the input from people who know a whole lot more about firearms and shooting than I do. I greatly appreciate those people sharing that knowledge with me in a manner that's not attacking me, just offering criticism. But what is astoundingly impressive is that those people who have never seen any of my firearms in person, they may have seen the same makes and models, but never seen my personal firearms, certainly never shot them, but they know more about my firearms than I know about my firearms. That is highly impressive. But even that pales in comparison to those people offering me that very helpful advice, even though they've never met me, they seem to know more about me than I know about me. I have to say that too. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Okay, pedantics and admonishment aside, getting back to our targets, they do show us a few things that's relevant to today's topic. One of those is, if you look at the target shot with the 3030, that's a fairly good group, not even close to center. If you want to shoot your rifle accurately, you've got to make sure your rifle is zeroed, and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes, too. But getting back to the target shot with the Winchester Model 88, there's a reason that group is that low. Let me see if I can illustrate that. I've got the shot holes from the original group covered with the blue pasties. Now I'll go back 100 yards and shoot another group with the Winchester Model 88 from prone supported, and we'll see how the groups compare, and this time I will make you sit through it.
So our group went from being fairly good, remember there's five shots under these four pasties, to being comparatively quite poor. Not only that, it went from being centered to being shifted off to the right. Why? So why did our second group shift to the right and become a much bigger group? The reason is the first group was low because I was aiming at the bottom of the target. With the second group, I was aiming at the center of the target. Okay, well that would explain why it's higher, but why is it shifted to the right a much bigger group? Because with the design of the iron sights on this Winchester Model 88, their shape, their color, the distance between the front and rear sight, the distance between the rear sight and my eye, make them such so that under some conditions, I just can't shoot this rifle very accurately. Trying to put that sight picture in the center of this orange target just doesn't work for me. And there's other conditions where it doesn't work very well for me either. So initially to get a decent group, I had to shoot at the bottom of the target, not try to find the center of it. And that brings me to point three on my list of points for accurate rifle shooting. Now remember, point one was if you want to shoot your rifle accurately, you need an accurate rifle. Point two A, you need good quality accurate ammunition. Point two B, you need ammunition that your rifle likes. Point three, despite what anybody else tells you about what is or isn't accurate, if you want to shoot your rifle accurately, you have to find a rifle that you can shoot accurately under the conditions in which you intend to use it. Now, let's go to point four, and I promise that won't take nearly as long as point three did. My list of points for accurate rifle shooting has five points, and we're finally to point four and point five. Point four is something I alluded to earlier when we were looking at those orange targets. Point four is, if you want to shoot your rifle accurately, you have to zero your rifle. You have to sight it in. Now, when I say that, people will be put out with me and say that that's not helpful. It goes without saying they already knew that. But there's a big difference between knowing it and doing it. Let me tell you an anecdote. I'm out with a group of people and we're going to do some informal, impromptu plinking. And there's a 12-year-old kid there who has never fired a firearm of any kind. Someone hands him a lever action 22 rifle, gives him some brief instruction on how the sights work, and then the kid's going to shoot some short distance, like 15 yards, at something that was fairly small. I actually don't remember what. And as the kid aims in, the owner of the rifle tells him, now it hits a little to the left, so aim just to the right of it. At that point, somebody, not me, somebody else told the owner of the rifle, he's never even fired a gun before and you're already teaching him about Kentucky windage. Now, this illustrates my point. There's a difference between knowing and actually doing it. If you know your rifle hits to the left, then adjust your sights. And a lot of people just don't put in the effort to do that. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on how to adjust different types of sights. We already have several presentations on that. I'm only going to harp on the fact that you really have to put in the effort to actually do it. Now, some rifles have scopes on them, and a lot of scopes will have a vertical and a horizontal, and you've probably seen this. You look through somebody's scope, and it's not vertical and horizontal. It's canted and starting to look kind of like an X. And the owner of the rifle will tell you something like, well, it hits a little bit to the left. Seems like everything always hits a little bit to the left. But anyway, he'll tell you it hits a little bit to the left, but he can't really adjust it because if he turns the dial to make it go right, because it's canted like that, it won't go right in the sense that you want it to you're never going to get any truly accurate shooting if you've got a rifle set up in such a way that you have to look at a target and say, well, it's about 150 yards, so my rifle hit eh, about 10 inches to the left. No, what you have to do is loosen that scope, rotate it so your vertical is back to vertical, tighten it down, take it to the range, re-zero it. You have to do your due diligence if you want to zero your rifle and you want to shoot accurately. Now we saw that my 3030 appeared to be quite a ways off. So what I'm going to have to do is shoot that rifle from a different shooting position at a different target and confirm that it is in fact off like that and then adjust it accordingly. Now adjusting for elevation on that rifle is fairly easy. Adjusting for windage can be very difficult. The rear sight is friction gripped, it's dovetailed in. And so you actually have to hit it with something to move it. And it's very easy to move it too far and then move it too far. And it can take a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of ammo to get that thing finally where you need it. 
But if you want to shoot that rifle accurately, you have to do your due diligence. And the real thing here is there's a huge difference between standing here talking about it and actually doing it. And I will actually do it. And if you want to shoot your rifle accurately, you have to do it. Not only do you have to zero it, but you have to shoot it at different distances. If you take your hunting rifle out and you sight it in at 100 yards, then you have to shoot it at 50 yards to see if there's any difference in the point of impact. For most rifles, it would be very little. But you also have to shoot it at then two and 300 so you know where it hits at those distances. Maybe even more, depending on what it is you're trying to do. But you've got to take the time to actually do all of those things. Now, point five. While you're zeroing or while you're just target practicing, you need to use the right targets. Again, not going to go into a lot of detail on this because we already have a tedious detailed presentation on paper targets, but you've got to get the right target for you. We saw that when I was trying to shoot my Winchester Model 88 with the iron sights at that orange target. That is not the right combination of rifle and sights and shooter and target to where I'm going to get good accuracy with that. I'm going to have to do something different. And there's targets that are different sizes, different shapes, different colors, and different things will work correctly or incorrectly for different people, depending on what kind of rifle you have, what kind of sights you have, and what it is you're trying to do. And you've got to find the right target for you. Today we were shooting at those half-size silhouettes. Because those aren't really a symmetrically shaped target, they're not perfectly square or perfectly round, a lot of people will have difficulty finding the center of a target like that, and it can make it difficult for them to really get their rifle zeroed correctly. Now what is the right target for you? Only you can decide. So let's recap. Point one, if you want to shoot accurately, you've got to start with an accurate rifle. Point 2A, you need good quality accurate ammunition. Point 2B, you need ammunition that your rifle likes. Point three, despite what the rifle can do in a vice or what people tell you, you have to get a rifle that you can shoot accurately. Point four, you gotta sight your rifle in. And point five, you've gotta use the right targets. Now there's one thing to add to all of this. I keep using the term, you should do this and you have to do that. Remember, I only word it that way because it makes it easier to get the point across. Nothing I say today should in any way be inferred as any kind of tutorial. I am actually in no way trying to tell you what you should do. I'm only explaining what I do. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching Accurate Rifle Shooting, Part 1.